Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at Tungaru. Now the idea of this game is it takes place during the early days of the Polynesian Islands. You want to spread your culture throughout the islands and recruit nomads into your tribe to make yours the strongest tribe around. You can be going from island to island, trading with the locals, harvesting goods from the islands, leaving some of your tribe members behind, and of course adding people from the island to your tribe and maybe leaving a monument behind. Now for someone that lives in the big city and dreams of holidays in the far-flung areas of the globe, this setting really intrigued me. The main mechanisms of the game are dice placement, but with what I found to be a slight twist to what I'm used to. It also involves resource collection and some engine building. And as you progress through the game, you're going to be recruiting nomads from the islands, and they all have a way to, different way to score at the end of the game. So it adds a little more depth to the game as you have to alter your strategy based on the nomads you recruit. So, will this game be like a day on the beautiful beach with a perfect temperature, or more like rain during your entire vacation? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and then we'll come back with my final thoughts on Tungaru. Here's Tungaru set up for three players. You'll remove all the nomad tiles based on the player count and stack them off to the side of the board. These tiles will be the timer of the game. When they are gone, the game is over. Place one nomad face up on each island and one in each migration spot. The resources are also placed off to the side of the board. Each player will take their player board of their color along with all their components, including their deck of cards. Monuments are placed on the designated spaces on the player board. Set one die and your settlers off to the side in reserve. Each player gets one of each type of resource placed onto their storage slots. You can never have more resources than open storage slots, and the same is true for your nomads. You cannot have more active nomads than open slots. You can increase your storage by removing monuments during play, but at the start of the game you can have a maximum of two nomads and five resources. The first player will get the first player token. Then starting with the player going last in the round, each player will place the boat on an anchoring space between two islands and then remove one monument from their player board and place it on the nomad on one of the two connected islands. When taking monuments from the culture track, you must always remove the top monument. While this nomad is reserved, no other players can recruit that nomad tile, but if you recruit another nomad instead of this reserved one, your monument will go back onto your board. The game is ready to start, and the game is played over multiple rounds until the nomad pile is empty and all migration spots are empty. Each round is made up of four phases. In the first phase, the starting player will roll their three dice, and all other players will turn the dice so that they match. All dice are placed onto the player's boats. Any nomads that are currently face up that give you resources each round are activated now. For the second phase, each player will secretly pick from one of their leader cards from their hands. So let's have a quick look at the leader cards. They have a name of the leader and a number. The higher the number, the later they will trigger during this phase. At the bottom of the card, you will have the special ability, which is activated when revealed. Dice placement areas, you'll always have one spot, but if you're playing with three or more players, each leader will have two spots that only the person who played the leader can place their dice. Finally, you have the leader benefit, which is used once per turn. Once all the players have selected their cards, they are revealed and the leader special abilities are triggered. Once all the leaders have been triggered, we go to the next phase, which is the heart of the game. Each player will perform one action until all players have passed. To perform any action during this round, you must either use one of your unused dice from your boat, or exhaust one of your non-exhausted settlers on an island. So let's go quickly through the actions. To sail to another anchor point, take any die from your boat and place it on your player board. Then move your boat. You can cross one or two borders at no cost, but to cross a third will cost you a fish, and you can never cross more than three borders per round. Each anchor point can only hold one boat in this three-player game, but in a four to five-player game, each anchor point can have two boats. Before we get into the other actions which generally revolve around islands, let's have a quick look at an island. Each island will have a spot for settlers, the current nomad on the island, spaces for monuments, the market space to do a trade, and what the harvest action is on the island, and finally spots for dice for activating the island. If you are using a die to perform an action on an island, your boat must be next to the island where you want to take this action and there must be a free die action space on the island. To perform the harvest action, Take a die from your boat that matches the harvest requirements and take the appropriate resource. You can never exhaust a settler to perform this action. To perform the settle action, choose an island that your boat is anchored next to, place one of your dice on the die spot, pay two fish, and place one of your settlers on the island. To do the trade action, either place a die onto the island or exhaust one of your settlers on the island. Then you can either place the needed resource on an empty market space and claim the resources as depicted on the island, or if there is already a resource on the market space, you can take that instead of doing the trade. 
For an action, you can also travel, which is move one of your settlers. Either take a die from the boat anchored next to the island with the settler you want to move, or exhaust the settler itself. Then move the settler to a connected island that does not already have one of your settlers. The recruit a nomad action is one of the main actions you want to be doing as it's the main way to score points at the end of the game. Either place one of your unused die from an anchored boat, or exhaust one of your settlers, then recruit a nomad from the island by paying the cost of the nomad. And let's have a quick look at the nomads. Across the top will be the cost to recruit the nomad. In the middle will be the action the nomad will give you when they're face up on your player board. Across the bottom will be how the nomad scores at the end of the game. So once you've paid your resources to recruit the nomad, you can then optionally, if you do not already have a monument on the island, place one of your monuments. Now you do not have to do this, and you can recruit on an island that already has one of your monuments. Sometimes when you remove a monument from your culture track, you'll also get a one-time bonus. Now when you take this nomad, it can be placed up on one of the open spots on your board. That is a nomad spot with no other nomad or monument. And this nomad will now become active. You can also replace nomads on your board with a new one. If you replace a nomad on your board, or you wish not to place this new nomad on your board, you can put them in your travel pile face down. Now once in this pile, those nomads may not be activated again, but the victory points across the bottom of the nomad will still score at the end of the game. You will then refill the nomad spot on the island with your choice of one of the two migration spots that are connected to that island. Then you refill the migration spot with a new nomad from the pile. The next action you can do is actually activate one of your face-up nomads. Some of them are one-time use and you'll have to put them in the travel pile after you've used them. Some of them are limited uses per round. To activate any face-up nomad requires you to place one of your unused dice on them. The other action you can do is your leader's die action. Place an unused die matching the requirements to get whatever resources from your leader. The final action is just a pass. Once you've passed, you're out of the round. When all players have passed, the round is over. Now in addition to your actions during the round, once per round you can use your leader's special action. Turn your leader sideways to show that you've used it, and most of these leader special actions are triggered in conjunction with the main action you're going to be taking. Now once all players have passed, we go to cleanup. During this phase, you'll check to see if the nomad stack is empty along with all the migration spots. If so, the game is over and you go to final scoring. If not, everybody retrieves their dice and unexhausts all their settlers. If anybody played a chief card during that round, they will take the first player marker. Then all players pass the leader card they just played to the person on their left. Now each player will still have five cards to choose from, but not necessarily one of each of the leaders. Then you continue back to phase one. But instead, if the game is over, you're going to go to the end of game scoring. You're going to group all nomads to like together from your player boards. The face-up active ones and the traveler pile are all combined and you calculate points based on their end of game scoring. And the nomads do multiply the score. For example, this nomad gives you two points for each monument you were able to place on the game board. And if you have two of these nomads, then each monument is worth four points. Then the player with the most points is the winner. Now let's get back to see what I thought about Tungaru. So theme and components. First off, I like the theme and it makes sense for the most part. The different islands have different cultures and through migration and trading, each player is trying to become the dominant culture there. This is the goal of the game as, your, as leaders and it makes sense and I liked it. Now it comes to actual mechanisms, I won't say that they're all thematic, but you know, many of them are. Yes, they are the standard Euro mechanisms that we've seen in many other games, but the thematic covering here kind of makes sense. So on to the components. High marks for this one. I really like just about everything on the components. The board has such a nice warm feel to it and it makes a change from all those other Euro games that seem to exist in a drab green and brown world. There are also little art touches all over the main game board. In the background, you have a school of fish here, a, card, a shark there, someone in outrigger canoe. And the card nomads are also nice and easy to read, but still retaining nice artwork. All the components have a nice bright look to them and even the wooden pieces were decent but I did like that each player's settlers were a different shape. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of the symbology in the nomads of the player boards, but that wasn't a huge issue after a little while. And I do wish the player boards were more than just heavy paper, but overall, very happy with the rest of the components. So on to the gameplay. Overall, I enjoyed this one, but I felt it was not without its flaws. I really like the simple card play of the game. You know, picking which leader you wanted during the round is fun, and as you're usually trying to plan your round, your round over which card you're taking. You know, if you're taking the beggar, you know, he allows you to pay one less to recruit a nomad, so you probably should be planning to recruit a nomad that round. Or you want to do an extra action? Well, you take the worker and, run ro and roll one more die. The fact that these cards are past the player on your left at the end of the round makes when you play them, you know, the timing of that is important. 
Now the leaders aren't going to make or break your turn. So if you don't have a certain lead in your hand, it's not that your strategy is destroyed. But you also do want to be making sure whichever leader you do play, that you're using their special ability and not letting it go to waste. Now one of my main issues with the game is actually the main mechanism of the game, the dice rolling and the placement. I normally really like this mechanism, but in this game it feels almost secondary what you roll. One player rolls the dice and all other players place the matching ones. But to do almost all the action, it doesn't matter what die you place. Only a few actions require a certain number or number range. It feels like this was a missed opportunity. If the die numbers don't matter for 75% of the actions, then why are we rolling the dice? Why not give us workers and have some other mechanism uh, for those few actions? You know, for those dice, why not have islands themselves only maybe take certain die values? Or have the higher numbers give you a stronger action? Or have it so that once a first die is placed on the island, that will dictate the other dice that can be placed on the island. I just felt that it didn't matter what numbers were rolled. And it really feels like a missed opportunity in this game. Now, the main goal of the game is to be recruiting those nomads. And they're going to be how you score points. As you start to recruit nomads, you're going to be starting to refine your strategy, which I enjoyed. If you get a nomad that gives you points for having settlers out, then you want to A, get all your settlers out, and B, get more of the same scoring nomad. The game, in recruiting anyway, has a little bit of player arc to it. You start the game by getting nomads who are help you, you know, extra storage spaces, give you resources each round, or maybe give you points for resources. But very soon you realize you need to be looking at the end of game scoring, and then the actions nomad gives you are almost kind of secondary. You're just looking at the, you know, how they score, and you want to get as many as possible. The rest of the game, though, feels like it has little to no arc to it. What you're doing the first round of the game is kind of the same that you're doing in the last round of the game. Get resources, then use them to recruit nomads. I found that it does get a little repetitive after a while. I do think, though, that my issues with the game have, do, have more to do with the design complexity. That is, it's a solid middleweight Euro game, and the design choices seem to be geared towards that. Nothing is overly complicated or hard to achieve. And that's definitely not a bad thing. And it makes sense that the game is easy to get to the table, and for people to understand not only what they have to do, but how you do it. Get resources, maybe trade resources, then get nomads. But it still gives you some nice lighter decision points. You know, which leader do you play? Which nomad do I go after? Do I give up some in-game points by recruiting nomads that will work better at the end of the game for the you know, end of game scoring? So would I recommend this game? I think yes, I would. If you're looking for a solid middleweight Euro, this one might be the one for you. I really like the components and the art in this game. And I like that you can change up the game by using the little uh, island tokens, which I didn't show through the walkthrough. They change up the market and harvest spaces. I like the card play and having to pass the card to the person on your left after using it. And I love the end of game scoring process and making sure that during the game, I was either collecting the right resources or doing the right actions to maximize those points. I also enjoyed the, the minor play interaction. And with getting higher player counts, getting all the nomads to maximize your points became harder. So watching what other people were doing was just as important to make sure they're not cornering the market on one type of nomad. But for me personally, I think that the dice mechanism should have been more robust. If the majority of your actions don't need dice, then why do we have them? I also feel through all the beautiful art and components that this game is nothing new. We've seen this all before. Now I did enjoy my plays of it and would happily sit down and play it, but it's not one I'm going to pick up over other games with similar mechanisms, but it might be one I pull off if people didn't want something maybe as heavy as I wanted to play. So I'm going to give this game a 7 out of 10. Ultimately, I enjoyed my plays, and I feel it's a nice solid Euro game that unfortunately just misses the opportunity to become an exceptional game. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.